let us take a detailed review of the instrumentation of UV visible spectrophotometer this is the this is the light source for example this is the monochromator then there is a slit or beam splitter and this is the sample compartment for give it uh, sample compartment for simple and standard then there is a again choppers to direct this radiation to detectors then to amplifier and then to the recorder now let us uh, have a brief introduction of the light source there are two types of light sources deuterium or hydrogen discharge lamps this type of light source is used for the radiation range of a ultraviolet region which is from those 200 to 400 nanometer and in some books it is written that it is from 162 to 375 nanometer this deuterium or hydrogen discharge lamp huh? give us radiation in the ultraviolet huh? region the mechanism of this involves the formation of an excited uh, molecular species which break up to give an two atomic species in this lamp and an ultraviolet huh? photon then there are quartz windows uh, in these limbs and quad cavets these cavets are also made up of quartz uh, uh, not of glass because glass absorbs the radiation of an uh, ultraviolet uh, region so this is the deuterium or hydrogen discharge lamp which is for the ultraviolet region and uh, the second type of lamp which is used in the UV is the tungsten lamp tungsten lamp produces radiation in the visible region that is from uh, 400 to 800 nanometer tungsten lamp simply contain the tungsten filament uh, in it which produces radiation in the visible region of uh, ultraviolet uh, visible region second is the this monochromator or wavelength selector it is called, called wavelength selector because it allows only a specific 
wavelength radiation to pass through it into the sample compartment the monochromator uh, all of the monochromator contain the following uh, components my first is the entrance slit if we make a zoom view of this portion this may be like uh, this diagram for example this is the entrance slit for example this is the exit slit then there are different type of lenses used in the monochromator this radiation for example when it enter here it strike this lens to this grating or uh, reflection grating this is called reflection grating they fall and this grating the angle of this grating can be changed to obtain wavelength of uh, desired to obtain radiation of desired wavelength and also the angle of this lens can be changed to allow a specific wavelength radiation and this radiation will strike over here and it will finally move out uh, in such a direction now the first is the entrance slit and uh, second is the collimating lens these are the collimating lenses third one is the a dispersing device this is the dispersing device it's called the reflection grating this may be a prism and this is the focus lens and finally there is a exit slit exit slit this is also called the caesar knee turner grating monochromator what happen the poly chromatic light uh, radiation enter through this uh, slit the beam is collimated and then strike the dispersing element at an angle this is collimated and then strike at a, a specific length to the reflection grating the beam split into component wavelength uh, of by the grating or prism by moving this dispersion grating and the focus lens toward this direction or toward this direction we can change for example this wavelength will not move will not move out huh? but if we will change uh, the angle in uh, this in this direction and will move this in this direction this lane this specific wavelength may come out of this through this uh, slit this is the basic principle of uh, the monochromator that by moving this and by changing the this angle 
we can obtain only a specific wavelength radiation there are different radiation that enter here but all will never move for example this radiation if it come in this direction it strike here but it will never move out of this uh, monochromator important component which is we will discuss is the sample container sample containers are uh, also called cavities they are made up of uh, quartz not of uh, glass or fused silica because glass may absorb radiation in the ultraviolet visible region so they are made up of quartz or fused silica they are uh, extremely costly so during handling these cavities must be used with caution and these cavities sample solution will be transferred for analysis and then they are placed in the cavity holders and then the important uh, another important uh, part which we will discuss today is the detector photo multiplier tube and charge coupled devices are the example of detector the photo multiplier tube uh, consists of uh, it is uh, like this uh, if a photon enter it uh, it contains several dynodes dynode is any substance uh, which uh, when struck by photon it emits electron and when this uh, electron struck uh, strikes another dynode uh, it will release two or three electron and in this way a series of electron will be produced which will ultimately move into the amplifier the these are called the dynode dynode is anything which when struck by a photon it releases a electron charge coupled devices are also similar to the photomultiplier photo multiplier tube but instead of dynode they contain capacitors and then last but not the least is the for is the sorry this is not the lot amplifier the the alternating current which is produced in the in this detector it is of very low intensity so it is a uh, directed to into the amplifier which has servo meter and which uh, amplify or increases the intensity of the alternating current so that it can be easily recorded by the recorder the last one is the recording devices most of the time the amplifier is coupled to a pin recorder coupled to a pin recorder which is connected to the computer and uh, computer store all data generated in the form of a spectrum in this form of a spectrum of the desired compound now what happen in a nutshell we can say that uh, light from the 
light source uh, radiation from the light source come they pass through the monochromator or wavelength selector specific radi radiation of a specific wavelength uh, is selected by the monochromator uh, which is passed through the sample compartment containing the absorbing species uh, these absorbing species absorb radiation of specific wavelength um, their electron are excited from the what their electron are excited from the ground state to the high energy state um. but the intensity of light after passing through these sample and standard compartment will be decreased when it move into the detector detector will detect the decrease in the intensity of both uh, will compare them and will give us a result uh, in the form of a uh, spectrum this is whole about the is all about the uv visible spectrophotometer instrumentation now the uses of a uh, uv visible spectrophotometer what are its uses in pharmacy or in medicine first use is about the detection of a functional groups as i discussed earlier the uv visible spectrophotometry give us a rough data about um, what are the species or functional group present in the compound but the main use of uv visible spectrophotometry is a uh, the detection of a uh, or quantitative determination of a uh, concentration of a substance in a solution if we take a substance a solution that contain any uh, substance and we compare it with a, another solution of a known concentration of a substance we can determine that to what is the concentration of a the particular substance in our solution and uh, another is the detection of functional group functional groups can also be detected uh, by uv visible spectrophotometry and another way method is the another use of the uv visible spectrophotometry is the determination of a uh, configuration of geometrical isomers it can also be determined up to some extent by uv visible spectrophotometry we can also use uv visible spectrophotometry for the structural elucidation of organic compound structure elucidation of uh, organic compounds the last use of the uv visible spectroscopy is a uh, as hplc detector uv visible spectro uh, photometer is also used as a hplc detector in hplc when the active ingredient is a separated by the chromatographic technique it is finally analyzed by the instrument via this uv visible spectro photometer Today we will discuss about uh, some shifts in the UV visible spectroscopy and uh, the about the concept of a uh, chromophore and a uh, axochrome. Chromophore and axochrome and the
chromophore and oxychrome and uh, shifts it. due to their presence. Shift of uh, lambda makes our absorption maximum. Before uh, uh, we should proceed, uh, we will revise some transition which we have already discussed. Uh, there uh, is a sigma bonding orbital and another one is what this is the pi again the same bonding orbital and there is another uh, orbital the n non bonding orbital and then there is a uh, of some higher energy state orbitals the pi star anti bonding orbitals and the sigma star the anti bonding orbital what were the transition you may no first transition was the pi to pi star and then to pi to sigma uh, sigma sorry sigma to sigma star and sigma to pi star um, another transition which is a higher energy state was a pi to sigma star and pi to pi star other transition were n to sigma star and n to pi star now we will uh, study about the chromophores uh, are, I will write it in a red color because they are the colored uh, groups uh, they can be defined as isolated covalently bonded uh, isolated covalently bonded groups that shows a characteristic characteristic absorption in the ultraviolet visible region it is from 200 to 800 nanometer they give the color uh, give colors to the compounds uh, when they are present uh, in compound there are two type of uh, chromophores one are the chromophore the example of which are ethylene and acetylenes this is ethylene and acetylene this is the acetylene In ethylene and styline, there are uh, sigma bonds. These are the sigma bonds, and there are pi bonds. Okay, so these are the chromophore in which uh, transition take place from a uh, pi to pi star. And there are uh, other type of uh, chromophore, for example, uh, the carbonyl groups, nitro groups, azo groups, nitrile groups. This is carbonyl group. These are the anti bonding electrons which are present uh, uh, on oxygen, non pair non bonding orbit uh, electron. And these are the pi in these are the uh, non bonding electrons in this type of uh, chromophore uh, transition takes place from a uh, uh, 
pi to pi star and uh, another transition yet also take place in these uh, compound this is called the n to pi star transition n to pi star transition this type of transition will take place here n to pi star and pi to pi star transition this type of transition take place in carbonyl groups in nitrile groups and azo groups in the first example what were the type of pi to pi star transition were only taking place these were the only transition which were taking place uh, pi to pi star transition uh, was the only transition which was taking taking place in a ethylene and ethylene but in the other type of uh, chromophore uh, two type of transition take place one is the this is the pi to pi star transition and other type of transition which take place is a uh, um, n to pi star uh, this uh, chromophore may affect our analysis process uh, and may give but uh, we should first i think explain oxochrome and then we will proceed toward the different shifts what is oxochrome oxochrome is a may be defined as a, a group which doesn't itself act as chromophore it doesn't give a specific absorption in the uv visible region and it doesn't give a specific color to the compound but uh, their presence bring about a shift of the absorption band toward the longer wavelength of the spectrum their example are hydroxyl group or groups and is two groups etc now what uh, does this mean that uh, the absorption shift is brought toward the longer wavelength for example this is our lambda mix it increases in this direction and this is our absorption this is our uv visible spectrum for for example for cetrazine hydrochloride which we have discussed that absorption maximum occur at 232 nanometer that is the lambda max is 232 nanometer but for this purpose the active material which is cetrazine hydrochloride must be dissolved in water but if instead of uh, water or in place of water someone have dissolved it uh, in ethanol which contain this hydroxyl group which is an oxochrome so our absorption uh, maximum which is 232 nanometer this is called the absorption maximum it will shift toward uh, a longer wavelength it will not take place at 232 nanometer rather for example it will take place at 242 nanometer due to the presence of this uh, hydroxyl group which is actually an oxochrome and uh, when this uh, absorption maximum is uh, shifted uh, toward a longer uh, wavelength uh, what is uh, this called this is called a uh, red shift it's called red shift uh, this is also called bethochromic shift this may occur due to change in solvent or this may occur due to the um, presence of uh, an oxochrome impurity in the active raw material what will be the type of transition which will be taking place in such type of uh, shifts uh, pi star transition non bonding to pi star transition will be taking place in such type of a compound n to pi star transition will be taking place in such type of a shifts and then uh, 
there is another shift which is called hypso chromic shift what uh, does this mean so hypso chromic shift now for example this is our uh, absorption maximum of cetrazine hydrochloride which we have dissolved in ethanol it give us lambda max or maximum absorption 242 nanometer but if we change the solvent from ethanol water now what will uh, happen the absorption maximum will shift from uh, 242 to 232 nanometer the lambda max will shift to 232 nanometer uh, when the absorption maximum is a uh, shifted uh, towards shorter wavelength the wavelength becomes shorter first it was 242 which is long, longer wavelength now it is 232 which is shorter wavelength uh, this type of uh, shift in which the absorption maximum is shifted toward uh, shorter wavelength uh, is called a uh, blue shift or hypsochromic shift uh, and this may occur due to the polarity of the solvent because ethanol was more polar solvent as compared to water water is less polar solvent we change the solvent and uh, such type of effect occur and now there are some other shift uh, which are called this sorry this was the shift uh, when, uh, which uh, was due to the presence of ethanol this green one is the shift which is due to the presence of ethanol as a solvent but when we change from ethanol to water but, um, the absorption maximum is uh, shifted toward a shorter wavelength uh, that is from 242 nanometer to 232 nanometer so the shift is called a blue shift or hypsochromic shift and there is concept of a hyperchromic shift what does this mean hyperchromic uh, shift uh? Hyperchromic shift is an effect uh, by virtue of which absorption maximum uh, increases. The introduction of uh, an oxochrome in the compound generally results in the hyperchromic shift. Hyperchromic shift, what does it mean? The absorption maximum increases. Absorption maximum means lambda max increases. Increases mean if it was first 200 nanometer. Mm, when it will be increased it will occur it to, to 20 nanometer due to the presence of what due to the presence of oxochrome in the compound or oxo change of solvent in the compound this is called hyperchromic shift and what is hypochromic shift Hypochromic shift is defined as uh, the effect uh, by virtue of intensity of absorption maximum decreases. Intensity of absorption maximum decreases mean at 232 nanometer. If uh, first uh, our absorption was, uh, for example, 0.9, due to hypochromic shift. Uh, our absorption will take place at 232 nanometer but it will be somewhat like 0.8 this is called hypochromic shift and what is hyperchromic shift hyperchromic shift is a, a shift uh, in effect 
as an effect by virtue of it the absorption the intensity of absorption maximum for example at 232 nm the absorption take place at the same wavelength but its intensity is increased first of all it was 0.9 now it is 0.99 this was the hyperchromic shift and what is the hypochromic shift and hypochromic shift first of all if the absorption was 0.9 due to the hypochromic shift the absorption will take place at the same lambda max but its intensity will decrease from 0.9 to 0.8 then no 0.8 gram or milligram per ml and uh, this hypochromic shift occur due to distortion of the geometry of the molecule with the uh, an induction of new group if any other group is present in a pure raw material or pure ingredient its shift will be uh, absorption maximum will occur at the same 232 nm but the intensity will be decreased because now we don't have the pure raw material we have some which we can uh, which we can call which impurity so the due to this impurity the absorption uh, maximum will take place at the same lambda maximum but its intensity will be decreased from 0.9 to 0.8 but sometimes this intensity may be increased due to some groups from 0.9 to 0.99 this is may occur due to the presence of uh, colored impurities in the raw material and uh, in this case for example if the absorption maximum at 232 nm was first uh, for the pure material 0.99 for the material with a colored impurity it will be 0.99 and this will be called hyperchromic shift and uh, the second one at uh, in which uh, the intensity of absorption is decreased from 0.9 to 0.8 it is called hypochromic shift thanks for watching